Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and I honestly didn't think orthopedic shoes would help, but I stand corrected. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called No Man's Island, a top-down open-world survival game where you're shipwrecked on some fantasy island. Now survive and find a way off of it. Developed by Rift Game Studio and published by Minidev Studio. This game was released not in early access, at least according to the Steam store page, and selling for 10 American dollars. So, yeah, I've already pretty much told you what the main idea of the game is. I can't really go into more detail about it, you know, which sucks because I'd like to know more so I could inform you guys more, but that's pretty much all I got. So, since I got nothing else, let's just dive right into the good and the bad and find out if it's worth your time and money, shall we? So, as always in these videos, we're going to go into the positives. The first positive is that price tag. Considering the amount of time you could find yourself playing this with the replayability and the amount of content included here, that price tag is a steal. $10? For this? I mean, that's not bad. I mean, anybody can come up with $10 nowadays, and being in this econ this kind of economy, it's, it's even nicer for it to be so cheap. The next positive I have is the music. It's not the best I've ever heard, like it's not epic or super beautiful or anything like that, but it is catchy, and it is nice to listen to, and it does kind of fit the theme of what you're doing here, so, you know, and since you're going to be listening to it for the majority of the gameplay, it's actually not bad. Okay, so yeah, that's all I got for the positives. Oh yeah, everybody, it's going to be one of those kinds of reviews. Man, these games just keep, keep getting worse and worse because the last one, I was done before I even hit three minutes. This time I'm done before I even hit two minutes. I can't wait to see what the next game has in store. All right, so let's start off the negatives with the fact that the entire time I was playing it, I thought this game was an early access. I mean, I was completely convinced that it was, and I was surprised when I went to the Steam store page and saw that it was not. Now, I don't know if that was a mistake or if it was really released in this state, but wow. So I have a lot of negatives here. So let's just dive right into it with the first thing that I noticed, the tutorial. It's garbage. I don't think I've ever seen a worse tutorial. It literally goes from make an ax, make a sickle, to kill bears and make a cape so that you can go to the frost land and kill one of the big main bosses and take her eye. Like, uh, hello, what about teach me the basics about base building skills, regular fighting skills, what do all the different items do, how do I get them, what about those combat skills, do I get any, do I level up, it looks like I do, maybe, what about navigating the map or what the icons on it mean, what about my general purpose here, is it to explore or to craft, you know, basic gameplay stuff, which is what I really need to know, how do I fight, are there, can I dodge or do I just attack, but no, instead, you'll just have to figure it all out for yourself. Even the damn tooltips aren't helpful. I mean, I see a saw. I click on it to see what it does. All it says is wood tool. Great. Thanks. As if I couldn't have figured that out on my own. It doesn't tell you how to attack. It doesn't tell you that your character will auto-attack once you do start attacking. It doesn't tell you about inventory, hotbar, or anything about the pet that it gives you at the beginning of the game, which they say it's a wolf, but it's not. It's a fox. And it, you're, there's actual wolves on the island that you can see and compare it to, and you will know that it is not a wolf. So I don't know why they keep calling it a wolf. And there's also like a dragon that you can apparently get if you get a dragon egg. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a cool idea and everything, but... Uh, Maybe start me off a little bit slower. Maybe not reveal those kind of things right at the beginning. I mean, it's a cool idea, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be 8 to 10 hours of me struggling with this game before I can even get to that cool thing. Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned at this point, not worth it. It literally just gave me a few tips. Find blueprints to unlock new things. This is how to build an axe and a sickle. And this is how you find fishing spots. That was it. That was all it told me. Nothing about the gameplay, nothing about combat, nothing about exploration, nothing about progress, or about the user interface, the buttons, nothing. So you're completely on your own here, and it's awful. Which reminds me, up next is the awful UI, its user face. It's a bit too small and hard to read, number one. Considering the amount of space available on the screen, it's ridiculous that the UI is just so tiny. I can barely read it, and I've got perfect vision. Think of all the stuff you could add to this screen to help your players better and still have room. See? It's wasted, but most of the descriptors in this game are pretty awful off as well, honestly. Half of them are generic or one or two words, not really telling you much about them at all or even how to use them. So if you've never played a survival game before, then you're going to be shit out of luck trying to figure out how to use what and when or how. Also, there are spelling errors galore, and everything is so tiny with so little detail that it's hard to tell the difference between an orange mushroom and copper ore, between a stone and a coconut. 
between raspberries and tomatoes. So you're just going to be guessing the whole time. And yes, if you super scroll in, yeah, you can kind of sort of see the difference between a coconut and a rock, but then you can't see anything around you. And a wolf or a bear or a rock king troll thing could show up out of nowhere and wreck your day in a hurry. So you never want to zoom in that close because there's dangers everywhere and you need to see around you. Then you've got the sound effects. When they actually do decide to show up, they sound very generic and boring. Nothing too bad here, but nothing too great either. They just fade into the background since you hardly ever hear them, and you'll find yourself listening more to the music than the sounds and ambiance, because, well, it's hardly there. And the fact that it has no ambiance is just, I don't know why game devs keep putting out games that don't have ambiance. And if you don't know what that is, it's simple things like the rustling of tree leaves, or the distant howl of an animal, or birds chirping or your character just stepping on grass you know these are just little tiny things that you can have playing in the background that would enhance the experience because sound is super important in games and it's 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 basically non-existent here and then you've got the graphics now while everything at first glance looks detailed enough you'll find the longer you play that it's all that it's all basically dark colors with everything blending into each other making it very hard for you to see the tiny specific items on the ground because well they're camouflaged the attention to detail is there most of the time but nothing else is and it was just hard to navigate or identify things in this game because of its look and you know that the the look and feel is wrong when you can't tell whether it's nighttime or daytime because there's been so little change in the lighting I could not tell when it was day or night unless I looked at the clock because I just I, I couldn't see a difference. The next negative is the overall gameplay and a lot of things are just wrong with it. I mean, you can use WASD to move, but also the mouse. The mouse is used to collect items and move, so with the tiny detection boxes you'll constantly be finding yourself moving rather than gathering. And why did my hat disappear? I was wearing the damn thing for 20 minutes, 20 minutes of doing nothing but gathering and my hat was losing durability and it just disappeared. It decayed to nothing. I mean, does do the game devs not understand how physical objects work? Even if I was on a, a barren island in real life by myself and I had an old hat, an old raggedy hat, it would still probably last me most of my time on that island. Not 20 minutes, not a day. And it's not like it was 20 minutes of combat, it was just 20 minutes of me walking around and exploring the game and my hat just deteriorated into nothing for no reason. Makes me not even want to build clothes if they're just going to fade away so quickly. When you craft things, or at least more than one thing, they don't stack in your inventory automatically unless your inventory is already empty. For example, it crafts the first rope, then the other four you told him to craft are dropped onto the ground rather than stacking in your inventory. Like, that's just gameplay mechanic 101, how could you get that wrong? The combat is super easy too, by the way. If it wasn't for the enemies being incredibly overpowered with an infinite amount of health, I never would have lost to one. But just to check, I decided to die and see if that sleeping bag that I made was just for show or not. Well, it is. Because get this, once you die, it's game over. Completely. Start over at the beginning. You go right back to the main menu. No stats, no ending cutscene, no ending dialogue text or anything, just you die and pfft. So if you manage to survive and build up a cool home, get some cool armor, gather tons of resources, maybe you even got that dragon egg you've been looking for so much, and then you accidentally fall into water and die, game over, start over again from the shipwreck. If you get jumped by a bunch of immortal rock golems and can't escape because of the game's shitty object detection system, meaning you're getting stuck on things like rocks and trees, and then die, then yep, you guessed it, right back to the beginning again. And let's go into the absolutely awful start of the game. It's like, hey, welcome to our world's most dangerous island. Go fight to survive, and here's zero information. And it's done very poorly. There's no gradual entrance. It's just plop you right down into difficulties. In a lot of ways, it doesn't make sense. Without much direction or tutorial, you'll find yourself grabbing whatever you can in case you might need it, but doesn't allow you to build any kind of storage until you're at a higher tier of crafting. So you'll end up dropping most of the stuff you gathered along the way just so you can build a simple chest. To build a simple chest, well, you're going to need to get some copper. However, the copper is guarded by a rock king or a golem king. I don't remember what he's called. I don't care enough. The point is, is even after using 40 arrows, he was only at half health. And it's not exactly easy for me to gather these kinds of things. And I'm going to show you a clip right now about me doing battle with him. And look at this epic battle. Look at me fighting this rock king so I can have some copper, so I can make nails, so I can make a simple chest. Look at this. Are you seeing this? 
It's ridiculous. This is the combat in the game. This is probably how most of your combat is going to go in this game until you get some strong armor. There's no dodging, there's no blocking. You just click and your character auto attacks. And if you're using a ranged weapon, then just make sure you stay out of their way. And don't worry, their AI is so badly programmed that they're going to stumble, they're going to stutter, they're going to hesitate, and they're pretty much never going to catch you unless you just stand there. I mean, have these game devs ever actually played a survival game? Have they ever played a game ever? Here's a tip, game devs, as someone who's played a plethora of survival games. There are a few things you always need to have in these kind of games if it's going to be played solo. Even though if this game was co-op and I could play it with my wife, it'd only be marginally better. You need some kind of respawn system, some kind of respawn point or autosave function. Unless you think your game is absolutely perfect and no one will ever suffer any bugs, game crashes, or bullshit from your programming, then you need some kind of respawn or autosave function. Next, you need a solid, in-depth tutorial that teaches people everything they're going to need to know about surviving in that first hour of gameplay, especially if there is no respawn or autosave system. And third, you need basic resources, basic construction options like an axe and a pickaxe. Fine, you gave me those. But what about a simple storage chest, a fire, simple basic ingredients so that the players can build themselves up and not just have me build a fireplace that does... At first glance, nothing. See, they, since the game didn't teach me anything, I had to learn through trial and error that you have to drag things out of your hotbar and click it onto the item in the world to use it. But the game never tells you that. So when my fire went out, I was struggling around for 10 minutes just trying to figure out how to get my fire lit again. Then I was trying to figure out how to cook something and I thought, well, if I can drag firewood onto the fireplace to, make, to give it fuel and give it fire, then maybe I can also use the... I could use the meat I gathered and put that on the fire, and boom, finally, I was starting to figure things out. If only the game had taught me that itself, though. See, I thought this game was an early access because of how poorly it was made. Spelling errors, stability issues such as freezing and frame rate dropping, poor unfinished descriptors, janky combat physics, weird confusing crafting mechanics, but no, it's not. This is supposedly a finished product. If you haven't guessed it yet, I completely and entirely do not recommend this game, and if you hear a cat meowing in the background, it's because she decided now was the time to come and bug me. In fact, I recommend everyone who sees this video to flee from this game as far and as fast as possible. Do not support it, do not buy it. It's not even worth its $10 asking price. If it was early access and there was gonna be more work done on it, then sure, maybe it'd be worth a $10 asking price. I could see that as a great simple starting point and maybe one day it could become something awesome. As a simple investment on a basic survival game, then sure, yeah. But no, this is apparently a finished copy and most likely won't get any serious changes done to it. If you really want a top-down survival game made by people who actually know what they're doing with quality and still in early access so you know it's going to get even better, then go check, check out a game called Lens Island. I'm going to put it up here so you can see it and go find it for yourself. It sells for $25, so it's a bit more expensive, but it's done by people who actually know what they're doing and you're going to get a far more enriching experience out of it. I recommend you go buy that game and avoid this one. It's unfinished, it's buggy, and it's a very poor design. And I don't want you thinking, oh, he hates the game and he's being angry or mean about it. No, I'm not. I am simply being honest. I think this game is a ripoff, I think it is a garbage game, and I don't think it's worth anybody's time or money. Simply put, I'm not angry, I'm not frustrated. I s sometimes sound like that when I'm going into the negatives, because sometimes it just boggles my mind how they could fail so epically on a game like this. But I'm not actually angry or frustrated, all right? I'm trying to be fair, but I'm also a little animated because I'm passionate about video games, and so that is why I have the tone that I have. So, yeah, that's all I got for this video, everybody. Thanks so much for deciding to check out my channel. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.